am currently two drinks deep. If you look at the liquor cart behind me, you will see that I have lots of options. And I've been watching Christmas movies all day, and I want to talk about them with you. Right off the bat, you're probably looking at the title of this video and at the overall timestamp and saying, wait a minute, that doesn't quite match up. Well, that's because I need to have an intro because I want to say hello to you and I want to get you acclimated to the idea that I'm about to try to talk really fast and get myself prepared for the fact that I'm about to try to talk really fast. I cannot tell you how many times I have Googled what to watch this weekend because I've pretty much watched every Christmas movie on Netflix. So here are the ground rules. One, this list includes shows that are both Netflix originals and shows that aren't Netflix originals but are just on Netflix. And two, it includes shows that are both new this year as well as shows from previous years. Three, I already know that I'm putting movie in the title, but this list includes both movies and series, which makes the title inaccurate, but that's life. And four, I won't include spoilers. All right, here we go. There's so much fuzz. One, holiday. This is the most god-awful movie with a tired premise that has been done more successfully many times before. Oh, these two single people decide that they're going to be each other's platonic holiday dates, but will they fall in love, maybe? The characters are all unlikable, and the humor tries way too hard. Someone mixes up antiacids and laxatives, and it is not funny. And the movie does that whole thing where they're like, LOL, rom-coms are so dumb. That type of thing would totally never happen. And then that type of thing totally happens, but in the stupidest way. This movie is dumb. Skip it. Two, Lily and Dash. Definitely for teenagers. Can't decide if it wants to be a magical depiction of teen love or if it wants to incorporate some of the depressing realities of life. The main characters are both teenagers who are very precocious and like wise beyond their years and do things that no teenager would ever do or be allowed to do. It takes place in the type of New York City where people have like really big beautiful apartments and happen to run into each other randomly on the street. It's very cute and saccharine and like it's fine to have on in the background when you're baking or whatever. Three, A Christmas Prince. It's a Hallmark movie with a Netflix budget. A random American journalist finds herself in a royal palace under false pretenses. Will she and the prince fall in love? Will they celebrate Christmas? Will he inherit the throne? Does anybody care? They encounter minor romantic obstacles and misunderstandings. Nobody likes this movie sincerely, but everyone has seen it. You are contractually obligated to watch this movie in order to celebrate celebrate Christmas. I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. Try to have one drink in you when the movie starts and more ready to go because it does help. And just know that the sequels are worse. Four, The Princess Switch. It's a classic Prince and the Pauper tale with Vanessa Hudgens playing both roles. It takes place in a made up faraway country that loves Christmas. There's romance and shenanigans. It doesn't entirely make sense, but that's okay. Even real life doesn't make sense sometimes. And Vanessa Hudgens looks like she is having a blast, which makes this movie fun. It is more delightful and less obnoxious than A Christmas Prince. Five, nailed it, holiday edition. Surprise, this one is different from the others. Watch amateur bakers be given impossible challenges and not enough time to complete them. They fail spectacularly. It never gets old. I love this show. Six, 
The Night Before Christmas! This movie also makes no sense! It's a classic fish-out-of-water tale featuring a medieval knight who time travels to modern day and then is hit by a car, and the woman driving the car, played by Vanessa Hudgens, takes him in, despite the fact that he is a stranger. Will they fall in love? Technology confuses him! Was this movie sponsored by Amazon? Nobody knows! It's pure, nonsensical delight, but that's okay. Spike your eggnog before you hit play, and just know that this movie is still better than A Christmas Prince. 7. The Princess Switch 2 switched again. The title isn't trying at all, but now Vanessa Hudgens plays three different characters with three different accents, and the new third character is a lot of fun. Nothing is realistic in any way, but it's still easy to forget that there is only one Vanessa Hudgens. If you are even considering this movie, then chances are you at least vaguely liked the first one, so if you at least vaguely liked the first one, you'll enjoy this one as well. 8. The Christmas Calendar Bonnie from The Vampire Diaries plays a photographer who's basically underemployed working in a mall portrait studio. She receives an advent calendar that used to belong to her grandmother, and I can't help but wonder if the people who made this movie thought that no one would know what an advent calendar was, or if they put Christmas calendar in the title for search term purposes. Anyway, the calendar is magic! Her life begins changing for the better, and eventually she connects the things happening in her day-to-day -day life with the figurines that she receives every day from the calendar, even though they're pretty common Christmas-themed items. She meets a guy, but is he the right one? We'll find out. There are things that I could criticize about this movie, but I don't want to. All the performances are pretty charming, and they make the characters feel like well-rounded, developed people, as opposed to flat Christmas stock characters, which means that overall I do recommend this movie. 9. Let It Snow This is one of those multiple interconnecting storyline narratives about teens and love and growing up in a small midwestern town. It's actually pretty funny and I generally like the cast. It's a little bit less frothy than some of the other things on this list. It's sort of like love actually, but for teens, so depending on how you feel about that concept, you may or may not feel like you wasted your time. 10. Holiday in the Wild This is a terrible holiday movie, but a great elephant commercial. Kristen Davis basically reprises her character from Sex and the City, who, after a divorce, goes on a classic white lady savior trip to Africa and finds meaning at an elephant orphanage. This movie features Rob Lowe, who 10 out of 10 middle-aged ladies that I know want to have sex with. And in this movie, Rob Lowe casually explains to the viewer how wealthy middle-aged white ladies can help save baby elephants by donating money to elephant rescues, just like the one this movie was filmed at. It's so blatant, but it's for a good cause that I recommend that any horny middle-aged ladies watch this movie. 11. Santa Girl. Oh, this movie is terrible. It's about Santa's daughter who wants to be normal and go to a normal college for like a semester, but she's in an arranged marriage to Jack Frost's son. Christmas is run like a corporation. Mergers. Santa's low carb. Everything about this movie feels like it was done by a bunch of college students as their final semester project. Like everything, the script, the humor, the camera work, the editing, the timing. Did Netflix pay for this? Did money change hands? My Christmas gift to you is telling you not to watch this movie. 12. A Bad Mom's Christmas Initially, from the opening monologue, I thought that I was not going to be the target audience for this movie. It seemed like it would be best suited for people who use the phrases wine mom or wine o'clock on a non-ironic basis. But once the three grandmothers met, I was in. It's a really good cast. And there's a really funny scene where Katherine Hahn does a Brazilian bikini wax on Kevin from This Is Us. The movie has some good humor and jokes and some really solid one-liners, even if I can't really appreciate the mom catharsis of the plot as a whole. The script basically just feels like a genuinely funny person needed to make some money. And that is my super quick review of 12 different Netflix Christmas movies and shows. Hopefully it at least somewhat helps you decide what you want to watch this coming weekend. Oh, bonus 13th review, the Yule Log on Netflix is called Fireplace for Your Home, and the classic edition includes like some instrumental Christmas music that I'm not too wild about. So I recommend the Birchwood edition because that has no music and just a lovely fireplace crackle. 
so you can play that and select your own Christmas music from a different source and just set up a lovely Christmas atmosphere for your home. Cheers. I feel like I end a lot of these videos with showing you the shirt that I'm wearing and the words that are on that shirt, but I'm going to do that again this time. Um, because the sweatshirt that I'm wearing, it says, Hope your Christmas is classy as balls. And then it has a picture of Christmas balls. And I am showing you this because I truly mean this sentiment that I hope your Christmas is classy as balls. Happy holidays. My glass is empty. I had wanted to buy um, like 12 or 25 little airplane bottles of alcohol and do a little advent calendar for myself, um, but I didn't. So I just, I have a bunch of little um, tiny bottles of alcohol. And I know I should probably drink those big bottles back there considering some of them are open but I do what I want.